Shabbat Shalom. So we are continuing with our uh, little capsules. And what we're trying to establish are certain guidelines to help us um, understand the historical and cultural background of the Torah, help us understand the progression of certain notions, uh, whether it be metaphysical or mystical, within the history of the nation of Israel. It will help us understand um, to position ourselves in relationships to Christi uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So this is what we're trying to establish, guidelines. We're not establishing doctrines. We're not establishing dogmas. We're trying to help you uh, uh, better appreciate the message of God, his instruction, in a more, um, how can I say this? Yes, to be more practical with, uh, with what God is trying to uh, convey to us. Now, if you remember last week, we established uh, this idea that the Torah was written for us, but was not written to us. And some of you came to me uh, afterwards saying that you didn't fully understand what I was trying to, uh, to transmit to you, and that is very good, because I know that you're listening to me. And so uh, uh, I'll try to, I'll try to uh, um, recap what I, tr uh, what I was trying to teach last week, giving you two other examples. Again, the, 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 the guideline that what I was trying to establish is that the Torah was not, uh, is written uh, for us, but was not written to us. Meaning that when you read the Torah, you have to respect his, its historical and cultural background, okay? So, uh, first example, uh, remember when Jacob went to Laban and he fell in love with Rachel, remember? And so, when, it, uh, when the day came for him to marry Rachel, what did Laban say to him? He said, this is not the custom in this part of the land. You have to marry the older one, right? So is the Torah saying that that's what we have to do? No. This is not what God, uh, the Torah is instructing us to do. So we have to consider the cultural uh, background and try to understand what God is trying to teach us or the narrative is trying to teach us, right? Uh, another example, Leverite marriage. Uh, Leverite, uh, um, Leverite from the Latin word levira, uh, uh, brother's husband. That word, that's, what, that's what it means, Leverite marriage. So the Leverite marriage was a custom in those days where, for example, if um, uh, uh, a man died leaving his wife childless, it was the responsibility of the brother to marry the wife of the deceased man and give her children and these children would be considered as though it was given by the man who was deceased right so that was a custom in those days now is the torah trying to tell us that that's what we have to do no i wouldn't marry my well, anyway sorry let's just uh, <laughs> jesse <laughs> So, so, so wh what we're trying to establish is to understand that the Torah was given in a, in a specific historical context, with a, a specific mindset, specific customs, specific mentality. So if you don't take into account all these elements, when you come to the Torah and read it, you can come up with crazy ideas. Just this week, I was listening to uh, a specific... Um, Rabbi, messianic, not messianic, anyways. And he said, the Torah establishes that according to the first chapters of Genesis, we ought to be vegetarians. 
because Adam and Hava did not eat meat. So this is what the Torah is establishing. It's not. It's very simple. It's not. You can believe that, but you can't say that this is what the Torah is saying. You have to take it, you have to take into account the whole context, right? So, uh, last week I told the rabbi that I, I wanted to explain to you the idea of progressive revelation. But then this week I thought to myself, well, if I start explaining to the congregation the idea of progressive revelation, I might um, lose you in the process because uh, I thought to myself there are certain elements that we have to manage before we get into progressive revelation. So the, the, the first, let's say for today, the idea I would like to work with you is this one. The Torah teaches us that God gave his instructions to Israel. He gave them, and these instructions uh, were to be um, applied to a, certain, a different situation that would come out in the life of the nation of Israel. So you have the ten words, the, what we call the Ten Commandments, right? And then we see how um, we could apply these ten words in different situations, right? If we read, for example, the, um, in the, uh, the, the book of Le Leviticus in chapters 19, right? We'll see different ways we can apply these ten words, okay? So the Torah establishes that God gave his instructions. When he gave them this instruction, he did not give more revelation. He gave everything we needed. He gave his instructions. And what we do with these instructions is to try to apply them in the different situations that would arise with time. Okay, because with time, you can find yourself in uh, different situations. So, later on, we will read, and when we reach the book of uh, uh, Devarim, and I, I want you please to listen to me, because if you don't get this part, when we come to progressive revelation, you will not understand what I'm trying to say to you, okay? When we reach the book of Devarim, we are going to establish the notion of a Beit Din, okay? A system of courts, a system of judges, okay? What we will call the man of the great assemblies, the elders of Israel, or uh, in, the, in the days of Yeshua, they called it the Sanhedrin, which comes from uh, the Greek word synedrion, which means to uh, uh, assemble together, from where we get assembly or council. So Sanhedrin, okay, from the Greek word synedrion. Um, so we can see historically that there was a, the establishment of this system of courts. And part of the job of these men, and don't forget, the Torah clearly establishes that these men are not infallible. They commit mistakes, okay? In their judgments, they can, they can commit mistakes, okay? They're just men. And so part of the job of these men was to make sure that the instructions that God gave Israel could be, uh, um, how can I say this, could be uh, applied to the situation they were going to live in. For example, if you were a judge in the days of King David, then you would establish certain halakha that the people would live according to the instructions that God gave. So they, were in, they would interpret these instructions according to the situation. If you were a judge 
in the days of Israel under the uh, Roman Empire, well, the halakha established in the days of David were no longer uh, valid because you, you were in a different time, in a different situation. D do you understand what I'm trying to say? So these men could come and uh, establish these halakha and other courts could come and annul them. These, these uh, um, uh, principles were not s uh, written in stone, right? So the idea is that part of the job of these men was to make sure that the instructions that were given by God himself were being lived out by the people of Israel. God did not give more revelation. We will see next week when we speak about progressive revelation is that sadly we have come to the belief that God with the Torah gave some of his revelation. And when the prophets came, he gave more revelation. And when Jesus came, he gave more revelation. And when Paul came, he gave all the revelation. And that's not what God had established. God gave his instruction fully, completely, for us to live out. So this is, this is the, uh, the idea I want us to understand, that God gave us these instructions and he gave it to us. Uh, how can I say this in a... Uh, completamente. In, in fully, fully, fully. And this, this idea is going to be very hard for us to, to receive because, you see, religion is a system, okay? And I'm speaking about Judaism, rabbinical Judaism, I'm speaking about Christianity, and I'm, I'm speaking about Islam, because by the way, Christianity is an offshoot of Judaism, and Islam is a mixture of both. If, if, you, if you did no, not know that, it's a mixture of both. And if you carefully read the uh, Quran, you will notice that most of the stories that you find in the Quran are Jewish midrashim. Okay? This is very important for you to know to understand these systems. Okay, so religion is a system. Okay? And this system enslaves you. And you become dependent on that system. And when God tries to unplug you, you will put up a fight. You will put up a fight. Because you have been so dependent on the system, brainwashed, controlled by the system, ensnared by the system, that when God comes and tells you, this is not why, what I intended for you to believe in, you will not agree with him. You will fight him to the teeth. I know because I've been there. And I believe, I might be mistaken, that most of you are here because this is what God has done with you. He has unplugged you. And this, this act of God unplugging you hurts it hurts because <gasps> what, what, hold on you're telling me that all of the things that i have believed god never asked me to believe in that no no way hold, hold on it can't be that simple come on you're telling me that if I don't believe in this and this and this plus this and that and under this and upper that, God doesn't want me that? No, no. God wants you to study 
his instructions and to live by them. And so this is what we're trying to achieve in, 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 in this congregation. We're trying to establish guidelines because right now, next week, when I speak to you about hell, heaven, the resurrection of the dead, um, the kingdom of God, the end of days, reincarnation, Kabbalah, when I speak to you about all of these themes that God never asked us to believe in, you will want to shoot me. So I hope next week you'll come in number and listen to what... Eh? Without, without rocks, please. And <laughs> so if, if uh, this idea I tried to develop this morning was not clear, please stay with us for our study. If not, come to me and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk and we will try to uh, clarify the idea, okay? And, uh, and by the way, just as an aside, we're not trying to destroy your faith. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. We're not trying to destroy your faith. What we're trying to do is give you a perspective. A perspective. Okay? I have beliefs. Me personally, I have beliefs in the afterlife. But these are my beliefs. So I'm not, I can't impose them on you. And I know some of you have different beliefs than I do. And I'm not allowed to tell you to not believe in them. But what we're trying to say is that it's all optional. What is fundamental, according to Torah, is to live out God's instructions. Shabbat Shalom.